Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps to install StormKit on a self-hosted Ubuntu machine. Briefly, StormKit is a powerful self-hostable platform that allows you to deploy and host front-end applications. You can check the details on stormkit.io. So let's dive right into it. First of all, we'll need to SSH into our machine and install Docker and its dependencies in order to run a containerized version of StormKit. We can also use the binaries directly, but that's not going to be the subject of this video tutorial. Let's go ahead and install Docker. I created a script, which the steps were taken from the official documentation. It basically updates the dependencies, install Docker, and then runs a Hello World container. And on top of that, I also added the script, which adds the user, the current user to the Docker group so that we don't have to run Docker commands with sudo all the time. Let's go ahead and execute this command. And there we go. The next step is going to be to create a Docker Compose YAML file to run all containers inside this Ubuntu machine. So let's go ahead and create our Docker Compose YAML file. We already have an example Docker Compose YAML file inside the StormKit IO bin repository, which is publicly accessible. So you can go ahead and click on this file and copy its contents. Before moving on, I'd like to go over the services that are listed in this configuration. StormKit has two dependencies, a PostgreSQL database and a Redis instance. The first two services that you will see in this configuration file are these dependencies. Then we have an optional Redis monitoring tool, which is useful if you want to monitor the status of the background jobs. Next, we have the worker server that is responsible for processing background jobs. And we have the hosting service, which in this case contains both the API and the built-in load balancer for our applications. If you want to scale further, you can separate the API from the hosting and create another microservice for the API. But that's not going to be the topic of this video tutorial. Now let's go back to our Docker Compose YAML file. Paste the content and save the file. Next, we will have to configure the environment variables. So let's go back to our StormKit IO bin repository to follow the documentation. Here, you can see that we already have an example. Let's go ahead and click Copy. Go back to our instance and create a .n file on the same level with the Docker Compose YAML file. Let's copy the content. Here, you will see that we have several configuration options, but the one that I'm going to change is going to be the StormKit domain. We need to provide a domain to StormKit so that it knows where the deployment previews will go, where the API will be hosted, and where the StormKit UI instance will be hosted. I'm going to use vsk.me, which is my personal website, and save the file. Next, we are going to configure the authentication. StormKit has three authentication options. You can authenticate using GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket. You can authenticate using all these three services at the same time or you can choose which service to use. In this example, I'm going to use GitHub because I already have the GitHub app created. And to do that, we can go back to our StormKit IO bin repository and follow the authentication guidelines. You can see that here we already have the documentation for how to create a GitHub app. You can follow these steps. I'll skip this part because I already created one before this video. So I'll go ahead and copy the content of the snippet and update our environment variables. Now here we will have to provide the correct values for these environment variables. So go ahead and click on my avatar, find the account settings, scroll down to the developer settings, find my GitHub app, click on edit, and fetch all the required information from this page. The StormKit IO bin repository already documents where you can find this informa these information. So I'm not gonna go through them one by one. Uh, you can check it out here directly from the readme file. Now that we have all the environment variables configured, we can go ahead and create a StormKit folder on the same level with the Docker Compose YAML file. This folder will be mounted on the container so that whenever we install Node.js inside the container, next time we restart it, we don't have to reinstall it because all these files will be mounted here on the host. In this example, we have two ways to run the Docker containers, either through Docker Compose or Docker Swarm. I prefer Docker Swarm, so I'll go ahead and initialize the Docker Swarm and run this command, which you, which you can find on the, on the StormKit IO bin repository. 
This should create the services. After a couple of seconds, we can check the containers, grab the container ID of the hosting service, and check the logs. Now here you will see that we installed Node.js version 22. This has been done with an environment variable on the Docker Compose file. And by using the Stormkit folder that I mentioned before, all these files are installed in that folder. So next time we restart the container, we shouldn't reinstall Node.js version 22. If you need to change the version of your Node.js, you can simply remove the Stormkit folder, recreate a new one, and restart the container. Here you can see a few logs, gives you an understanding of the configuration. You can see that the Dave URL is vskey.me, the app URL is on stormkit.vskey.me, the API is here, and this is the help endpoint. Now, as soon as you start Stormkit, first thing it will do, it will deploy stormkit.vskey.me automatically. It will fetch the latest version of the Stormkit UI. And when it's ready, you can see a line like this so that you can click on it and visit your Stormkit instance. Once you visit the console, you will see that the GitHub authentication option is already pre-configured. So you can click on it and authenticate using your GitHub account. Now, once you log in, you will see that we have two applications. The first one is the Stormkit UI, which is the one that we're using right now. And the second one is the sample project. Whenever there is a new update with the UI, you can go ahead, click on this app, and deploy the application to receive the latest changes. Make sure that if there is a breaking change, you update the containers as well. To finish this video tutorial, I'll go ahead and deploy a Next.js app. To do that, I'll visit the import from GitHub page, search for my Next.js application, import it, visit the configuration page, find the serverless option, and provide the run command. Also, we need to specify the deployment folder as well. Now, if you don't specify these two options, when you deploy, Stormkit will deploy the application as a static page, but as I wanna receive all features of Next.js, want to run a server behind. So I updated the configuration, as you can see. I'll click the Save button, go here, and deploy. Now, this will take a couple of minutes, and in the meanwhile, I'll visit the settings page, change the display name, and hit the Update button. This will tell Stormkit to serve this application under the next subdomain. So the URL will be next.vsk.me. If I go back to the deployments page, you can see that now it's deployed successfully. If you click on the preview link, you will see that your next app is up and running. Since we're running the next application using the npm run start command, we have access to all features provided by the next team. With that said, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.